Hey everyone, um, welcome back to the second session of the local church. Right, um, so we'll move to uh, chapter 29, chapter 29, page 171 in your notes. Um, so so in, in section four, we have covered chapter 23, chapter 24, and chapter 25, right? Um, in section four, we've covered uh, systems and process within the local church, nurturing and equipping believers, nurturing and developing leaders, right? So chapters 26, 27, and 28 uh, will be covered uh, in the course uh, church and ministry administration. And in section five, we have four chapters. One is, uh, that's chapter 29, 30, 31, and 32. Uh, so chapters 30, 31, and 32 will be covered in, uh, course urban church planting in bc 309 okay and so uh, as concluding this course today we will con uh, we will cover chapters 29 and the last chapter chapter 33 uh, as closing thoughts okay so we are in chapter 29 uh, in page uh, 171 right, are you guys with me please Okay, All right. Um, so the chapter 29 is titled The Local Church in Relation to Other Churches. Okay. Uh, it says, It is important for the local church to have an outward focus and to be a blessing to other churches, Christian ministries, and to the community, whether it is in its vicinity or regions beyond. We see several examples of it in the New Testament. Okay, so it is important for the local church to have an outward focus and be a blessing to the other churches and Christian ministries uh, and to the community, whether it's in your city or regions beyond. Uh, do you think it's uh, crucial, guys, uh, about this for us uh, to have this outward focus? Uh, because uh, the reason I ask this question is it's uh, and I've, there are a lot of examples that I have seen is uh, uh, so many churches are very too focused only on themselves right the inward focus it's it's about me it's about us it's all about us me myself and you know the church kind of thing and no more uh, we it's only about us kind of thing so it's a that is a very inward focus uh, which which it's not appreciated, uh, you know, but we are called to have an outward focus and to be a blessing to the regions, to the nations around us, to the cities around us, isn't it? And multiple examples. So let's look at a few. The church in Jerusalem reached out and ministered to the church at Samaria. Okay, so they reached out and ministered to the church at Samaria, and that resulted from the ministry of Philip. Uh, which you can read in Acts chapter 8. And then later, Peter and John went and ministered to the new believers in Samaria. Okay, so what exactly is happening here? Is they are fulfilling uh, the Great Commission, isn't it? Like what Jesus told them, you know, go into all the nations and make disciples and baptizing them, right? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what they're doing, isn't it? So being, ha as a local church, when you're having this outward focus, it, all you're doing is accomplishing and establishing uh, the Great Commission. It's as simple as that. Right? So we see the church in Jerusalem reached out and ministered to the church in Samaria. Uh, the apostle Peter and John also went there and ministered there. And then the church in Jerusalem reached out and ministered to the church in Antioch. Right? Um, and the, and the later they sent Barnabas to pastor that church. And then uh, later... The same church, the church in Antioch, uh, sent help to the believers in Judea who were affected by famine during the time. Okay, um, so you see how beautifully uh, in the New Testament, the first century church, uh, how the churches were blessing and helping one another. Right, um, and so it's just a very simple pointers here for us to look at. Uh, the lessons, some of the lessons that we can implement is um, mature churches can help support and strengthen believers in newer churches spiritually. Okay, so you can ask this question uh, to yourself. I mean, is your church doing that? Is your church helping 
supporting and strengthening believers in newer churches right um, local church should relate to one another in sharing material things and being of help to others in time of need uh, okay relationships across local churches can be fostered by local leaders that's a very crucial point there please pay attention to it uh, it says relationships Okay, uh, guys, I think most of the times what we do is we end up putting ministry above relationships. Okay, uh, and that's when, uh, well, I mean, you can still get things done, but uh, but not as effectively and, and not as nicely, right? So, um, and, and this, I, mean, I heard this statement from a ministry leader who made this very beautiful statement who, you know, there, there was a misunderstanding between two ministry leaders who was leading a church and another ministry, you know, between the leaders, but they are good friends. But then this person said, okay, you know, uh, relationships are more important uh, than ministry. My relationship with this church leader is more important than my ministry itself. So, and, uh, and that's how they sorted things out. And, and, and that statement remained with me, uh, it has remained with me till now is uh the, the key is relationships isn't it you're like without people who are you doing ministry for you are yeah, it, you are doing ministry uh you know to get people uh you know to be a blessing and who are you going to bless when you know you you can't get along with people isn't it so relationships across local churches can be fostered by local leaders relating to one another or through apostles and prophets who help connect these churches through godly relationships uh, and the next point is we must maintain divine order when working together we work together while respecting the other local churches denominations and affiliation okay we maintain divine order when working together we work together while respecting the other local churches denomination and affiliation we must respect leadership from each other churches. Local churches believe must be taught to rightly relate to other local churches. Um, as as impossible as it may seem, right? Uh, of you know all the different denominations that's there and to and to function in unity, uh, respecting each other's beliefs is is very core, right? Uh, so you can be working in an organization, a Christian organization. Uh, where there can be people from multiple denominations, different denominations. And it is very easy to get into a conversation where it says, like, oh, you're from this denomination. Uh, oh, you don't believe in speaking in tongues. Oh, but we do. And then there's the other denomination. That says, oh, you guys speak in tongues. We don't. We only believe in, you know, we don't believe in all of that. It's very easy to put another person down uh, based on their ba denominational background. Uh, when while all of and i've seen this i'm simply not making it up i don't have to but um, a lot can also be avoided by just respecting uh you know each other's denominations or whatever it is uh, the common factor if as long as the common factor is jesus and they believe in jesus that he died and rose again uh, and i think that should suffice so as your local church um, you can ask yourself uh, you know, how is your relationship to other churches? What are you doing? Are you, are you being a blessing to? Uh, are you an outward focused uh, church as well? Um, so th that's something that you can ask uh, your church uh, yourself. Okay. Um, so that's that chapter. Let's go to the final chapter, uh, chapter thirty-three. Lessons from the seven churches. Page number one eighty-five in your PDF. Right? It's uh, chapter 33 is titled Pitfalls to Avoid. Right? Lessons from the Seven Churches. Okay. Um, now, I, if it's okay, you can uh, turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. Right? Revelation chapter 2. Um, just let me know if you are there. Okay. 
All right. Uh, one of the very simple things. I mean, so we know it's it's a it's a letter to seven churches and all of that. Right. What what's very interesting is um, it's in Revelation chapter two, verse two. It starts off by saying, "It says, okay, say to so and so church, I know your deeds." your hard work and, and your perseverance so it starts off by saying i know your deeds and when you come to the next church um verse uh let's come down to verse 9 chapter 2 verse 9 um it says i know your afflictions okay and then to the next church verse 13 chapter 2 verse 13 it says i know where you live and let's come down to verse 19. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 19. I know your deeds. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 1. And these are the words to him who holds the seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. And once again, and um, Chapter 3, verse 8, I know your deeds. Okay, And then the last, church, verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15, to the church in Laodicea, I know your deeds. Right? <clears throat> it's interesting to all these churches, uh, the one thing that Jesus starts off by saying is, I know. I know it. Right, and that simply means he sees. Right, that uh, you know, so his eyes are on the churches because church is his idea, and it's very close to his heart. And so he sees, and then because he sees, he says, "I know, I know your deeds. I have seen it. I see your affliction. I see where you live. I know it." Right, and so it is in that context uh, we approach uh, these pointers. Right, um, lessons that we can learn from these churches. So, uh, Church of Ephesus, he writes saying, Maintain your first love. As a local church, our focus should be on the Lord, loving Him, worshiping Him, and ministering to Him. Because, as human beings, it is possible for us to turn the Lord's house into the den of thieves. It's a possibility, isn't it? So uh, the one lesson that we can learn from the Church of Ephesus is to keep our first love. Our focus has to be on the Lord. Uh, okay? And the church in Smyrna, be faithful unto death. As a local church, we must be prepared to stand strong through persecutions. That's another lesson. Be faithful unto death. And church in Pergamos, Guard against wrong doctrine. People in the church who espoused the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of Nicolaitans, two groups of people who espoused a lifestyle of idolatry and immorality. As a local church, we must keep God's house people clean. Guard against teaching that permits people to live in idolatry and immorality. Okay, what are the things we covered so far? Simple, right? Uh, maintain your first love be faithful unto death and, and and guard your congregation uh with a false doctrine right uh guard against teaching that permits people to live in idolatry and immorality right there's uh there's there's the teaching that uh, about say grace that says okay you know uh you can do whatever you want to do uh while the actual uh truth about grace is grace doesn't uh does, grace is not a, a license for us to sin but it empowers us to live a holy life, right? And so that's what it is. And so guard against wrong doctrine. That's a lesson that we can learn from a church in Pergamos and a church from the church in Thyatira. Guard against demonic spirits. Permitting a woman Jezebel, a self-proclaimed prophetess, to seduce God's people into immorality and idolatry. Paul warned of a phenomenon in the last days, right? He says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, 
giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay, so, uh, so we see a woman identified as Jezebel posing as a prophetess, supposedly proclaiming deeper truths, uh, you know, and, and teach and seduce God's people, leading them astray into immorality and idolatry. Right? Uh, to seduce simply means to lead uh, into error, as it mentions. So the Jezebel spirit, Jezebel, who was Jezebel, right? Uh, you can, it, it, it was the queen in the Old Testament, led uh, Ahab into worship of false gods. She was a queen right, who was married to the king Ahab. And you can read all about it in First Kings chapter 16, 31 uh, and 21, 25. Uh, and so the Jezebel spirit, as it says, can work through a man or a woman. And what is this spirit? It is a spirit that promotes false doctrine, uh, promotes immorality, it promotes idolatry. Um, right, and so these uh, this is what you need to guard your church against, right? Guard against demonic spirits, uh, right? And religious spirits, self-deceiving, hy uh, hypocritical, man-pleasing. Um, so these are all, uh, this, these are what is called as the religious spirit, right? So you, you are guarding your church against all of them, right? Um, church in Sardis is, do not be fooled by a reputation. Uh, you have a reputation that you are alive, but you are dead. So as a local church, we must ensure that we are right before God. Man's opinion does not matter. What God says about us is important, right? Uh, a lot of us Christians, um, ministers, we fall prey to this word called reputation. Uh, we hide our sins. We hide our shortcomings, uh, all because of the fear of losing our reputation, uh, right? Uh, a simple example, such as it can be as simple as uh, a Christian wanting to go and seek counseling. I can I can think of so many people uh, who say, uh, you know, I don't want to go for counseling. Who, what if what will this person think if I go for counseling? I'm, uh, you know, because it, that 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 person could be a pastor's kid, uh, son or a daughter or whatever. Right. So what the point is, they're worried of the reputation. How can I send my son or daughter for counseling? Uh, because they all know me as a pastor. What will they think? Are you with me? Right. I hope you get what I'm saying, isn't it? Uh, so don't be fooled by reputation. Uh, don't you know? Man's opinion does not matter. What God says about us is important. So that's another lesson that we can learn from the church in Sardis. Don't be fooled by reputation. You may look alive. You may seem your church may seem like okay, it's doing everything right on the outside, right? All these worship concerts and lights and and everything said beautiful art, state of the art technology. Uh, it looks great and grand and awesome. Um, you have an amazing reputation saying it's like wow, this church has all the latest gears and whatnot. But then Jesus goes on to say, you know, uh, you have a reputation that you are alive, but you're dead. Right, um, so it's very dangerous uh, to function like that. A church in Philadelphia is to persevere and hold on, persevere, hold fast to what you have. It again resonates with being faithful, and and everything that we're doing. And a church in Laodicea, uh, be red hot on fire. Right? You're neither cold nor hot. Beware of self-sufficiency or complacency. Uh, complacency will uh, kill uh, our spirit of wanting for more of God. It keeps Jesus out of his house. We must always be hot on fire with passion for the Lord. Right? Uh, be on fire. Uh, compromise. Uh, don't compromise. Chalta hai attitude, as they say in Hindi. Right? Uh, chalega, chalta hai. It's okay. It's just one thing. It's just one time. It's okay. That it's okay attitude is what will kill uh, your spirit. And it says, okay, you're not cold nor hot. You compromise. It's it's uh, it's the compromise that killed uh, Israelites. Uh, you know, they compromised to the worship of the Canaanites. In Numbers chapter 25, it, it talks all about it. Numbers 25, uh, you know, they went into sexual immorality, but what led to them there is they began by worshipping their idols, their gods, 
and that led to all kind of immorality. Uh, and so that's compromise. Uh, be aware of that. It will kill. So these are the seven uh, you know, lessons that we can learn. Let's go through them very quickly. Uh, first thing is what? Maintain your first love. <clears throat> be faithful unto death. Guard against wrong doctrine. Guard against demonic spirits. Okay, don't be fooled by reputation. Persevere and be on fire for the kingdom of God. And let your church, wherever God has placed you, uh, reflect and resonate uh, all of this and everything that we've learned uh, in this course. Okay, yes, are you all doing all right? <clears throat> Okay, awesome. Uh, right, I hope you all are alive. <laughs> well, uh, so we've come to the uh, end of this course, uh, end of the content, um, and uh, we will not have classes from the following week. And I hope there was something uh, that you could learn off from this course. All right, thank you all for joining in uh, and being a lovely, lovely class. God bless you. Uh, you will hear about your final assignments exams uh, soon. Watch out for the space. Okay. So that's about it, guys. Um, take care, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor.